Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother, mother-in-law, lay sick with a fever. They immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her, and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a, and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages, that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. My name is Father Augustine Lieb, T.O.R. I'm a Franciscan from St. Andrews, just south of TCU. Some of you might know me, most of you probably don't. If you've ever heard me preach before, you know it is my custom to preach on this. God is love, and you're made in the image and likeness of it. That's the basic gist of what you need to know to know what you need to do. Today in these scriptures, you hear a lot about suffering. You hear a lot about the trials and difficulties of following the Lord, being close to Him, and then what happens as He sends you forth. And the heart of God the Father, who is love, is most perfectly manifested in the crucifix. And as He tries to remind you of who you are, men of God, he reminds you that you are most perfectly in his image and likeness when your love is crucified as well. Job teaches us that in the first reading. His perseverance, his diligence, his struggle to continue being faithful to what a God he couldn't understand through the suffering manifests the reality of God's favor and blessing. And we see in the conclusion of the book of Job, a tremendous revelation that not only benefits Job, but benefits us today here in this room. St. Paul, who suffered for the gospel unto blood, the man was stoned to death. He was scourged, imprisoned. He suffered. And he never counted the cost. That's what he tells us about here today. He doesn't count the cost. Whenever you love a person, if you truly love them, you don't calculate whether or not they're worth it, unless something's very wrong and very broken. But just in the reality of falling in love with someone, you just long for them. And our lives in the Lord look like this, and God himself looks like this with regard to us. Guys, he looks at us, and he's willing to do anything to have us and to use us. I taught a Bible study at St. Andrews, and that particular day, the focus of the Bible study was sacrificial love, which fits very nicely with these readings. And after it, two of the more macho men in this Bible study, they were young men, young adults, they said, let's take you out to eat, Father. I said, great. Great, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I said, and we went out to Buffalo Wild Wings. And we sat, you know, if you've ever been to Buffalo Wild Wings, we sat at one of the round tables, and I was right next to a booth. I had my back to it. It was probably about this much space, right? And it's a Thursday night, and it's like 9.30 p.m., so it's not really bumping. 
And we sit down, and these guys are like kind of excited about the idea of sacrificial love. And if I only knew what the Lord was going to teach me through me teaching. These, how many were there? Four, three young men came in. I would put them in their early 20s. They came and sat in that booth right behind me. I was in my habit, in my sandals, eating with these guys. These young men were under the influence of at least more than one chemical. They were exceptionally, no, they were exceptionally vulgar. They were rude to the waitress. They made obscene gestures to her and, and made gestures when her back was turned that were even more obscene. Uh, and they're right there next to me. And I could see the two men that I was at the table with who were young men. One was an Iraqi war vet. And the other one is sort of, he, he's just also kind of, and I saw both of them, they're like, you know, you could see like the heroics growing within them, right? And I said, guys, I said, the weapon the Lord has given us in this situation is only one thing, and it's love. And they said, well, what does that look like? And I said, all right, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I said, it looks like this. And I turned, and I said, what's up, guys? And they looked at me. Now, they saw me the whole time, because I was like a sore thumb in that place. But now I'm talking to them. I said, what's up, guys? And I know that God made them. My war and your war is not against flesh and blood. Those are my brothers that are captive to the enemy. They're not my enemy. And I'm looking at boys that are in prison camps to my enemy. And I talked to them through the bars. And I said, what's up, guys? He said, man, they're like, get out of here, man. I'm like, no. I was like, I just noticed you guys. And I'm looking. I'm like, Lord, what's true and good and beautiful about these men? It's like, you know what? They're looking to have fun. That's good. They, they want to enjoy fellowship with each other. That's good. It's broken. It's twisted. But that's the beautiful thing God made. And so I'm looking at that. And I said, I can see you guys. Like, you guys are good friends. And you enjoy being with each other. And they're like, yeah, man, whatever. They're like, man, you smoke weed? <laughs> they're trying to push me. They're trying to push me. They're trying to get me to hate them. At least they're, my enemy is trying to get me to hate them. And he's putting things in their ears and their minds to get me to hate them. And I am in the image and likeness of my creator. And I will not hate them. I will die for them. And I'll die for them right there in that restaurant. And brothers, that's what I had to do. I had to die for them. And I said, I was like, no, no, guys, I, I don't smoke weed. They're like, oh, man, we do. I'm like, oh, okay. I was like, well, you, you like having fun, you know? I was like, God, that's beautiful. And they're like, he's like, I got medis he's like, I got health problems. It's medicinal. You know, and his guy, they all start laughing. I go, oh, you have health problems. He goes, yeah. There's my end. <laughs> I said, I know, I know the answer to health problems. I got a cure for that. It's like, what? I go, Jesus. I dropped the J-bomb. <laughs> He's like, man, and like you could see getting out of here. And he's like, man, I, went, I just got out of prison, man. He like turned up the heat. It's like, I got out of prison. He's like, someone gets in my face, man. Like he's talking nonsense. He's trying to scare me and threaten me. One of the three guys now is starting to put his head down and get ashamed. The Lord's working on him. He's feeling ashamed because all I'm doing is loving them. Because that's all I got, guys. That's all you have. If I would have stood up and started fighting these guys, not physically, but arguing with them, reprimanding them, asking for them to be removed, I would have went home miserable, hostile, angry. They would have been hostile. It could have escalated. Even if it didn't, it would have been no good. And no one would have won. I wouldn't have won. They wouldn't have won. And my Lord and Savior, sure as heck, would have been put on the outside of the whole situation. But he was in there. And he was using me. And I just kept talking to him. And it got to the point where they were like, man, turn around. Get out of here. Nice sandals, man. Nice sandals. <laughs> you know? Turn around. I'm like, all right, guys. I'm like, man, I'm like, can I say a prayer for you, man? He's like, what? I'm like, can I say a prayer for you? Just like that little announcement. It's beautiful. It's amazing how effective it is. Can I say a prayer for you? What do you mean? I'm like, can I? I'm like, here, give me your hand. He's like, man, don't touch me. He's like, get out of here. He like flipped out. I'm like, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm like, Lord, I just ask you to bless him. 
Like you've made them good. You've given them good hearts. I pray you bless their hearts, free them from whatever it is. Blah, blah, blah. Amen. And I turned back around. They cooled out a little bit. They still kept doing what they were doing. Then, do you think God's love is limited? No. Then when the waitress came over, I said, hey, did these guys order their food already? She said, yeah. I said, don't tell them, but bring me their bill, please. She brought me their bill. I paid for it. I said, please don't tell them until we're gone. We finished up. Meanwhile, the two guys from my Bible study are there like. <laughs> They're like, oh, man. So we left out of there. We walked out just ahead of those guys, just, just ahead of them. We're in the parking lot. I'm like, how you guys feel? They're like, OK. I go, do you feel angry? They're like, no. I go, are you like all fired up? They're like, no. I was like, love protects you. All of the work of the enemy that he wanted to bring you into the camp he had them in through them. He wanted to minister hate and anger and destruction to you through them. But, they, but he couldn't because it will never defeat love. And because we loved them and we didn't hate them, we were impervious to the fiery darts of the enemy. The shield of our faith and our God who is love protected us. And they were like, yeah. <laughs> it's real. And as men, it's real hard for us sometimes to not want to make ourselves God and fix the situation. Instead of genuflecting, becoming love, and letting him into the situation. When your wife is nagging you about the same thing again, try being crucified instead of correcting her. Whenever your neighbor is pushing the same button again, try being crucified and loving him instead of fixing it your way. Don't be imprisoned to your enemy. It makes you think your brother is your enemy. I'll tell you what happened. About 15 seconds after I walked outside and asked the boys how they were doing and they said good, those three guys sprinted. The doors went and they took off and jumped in their car and peeled out of that parking lot. They were skipping their bill. They were skipping their bill. They have no idea what happened. But the love of Jesus Christ protected that waitress from getting stiffed. The love of Jesus Christ protected that institution from being robbed. The love of Jesus Christ protected our hearts from being violated. The love of Jesus Christ bears witness to itself right now to you so that you can know it's in you too so that you don't go out there and try to do it your way. He always wins. Love never fails. There's songs about it. There's a scripture that says it. More importantly, it's just true, guys. And you're in the image and likeness of it. So as you go forth from here, be it. Amen? Amen. Oh, that sounds so good. <laughs> Guys, this is what we're about. This is who we are. I am love in Jesus Christ. And through his sacraments, he makes me him. It's no longer I who live. It's him who lives in me. And that's the same for you. And that's what changes the world. Not white knuckle Christianity, but crucified Christianity. The Lord didn't crush the Colosseum. He filled it with the blood of his martyrs. The Lord didn't trample the Roman armies. He won them for himself. And now our Vatican is there. He wins by being crucified and relentless. And he wins. Don't let your enemy convince you it's done any other way. It's gentle and furious. So brothers, congratulations. Congratulations on responding to the will of God who brought you here. Congratulations for receiving that relentless love a little bit more deeply into your heart. And I praise the Lord who gets all the thanks for what he has done in you. And now, the God who you've been receiving into your mind and your heart and your spirit is now about to touch your very flesh physically and fill your physical body so that your spirit may overflow. This is good. Brothers, let's come to the altar of the Lord and receive everything he has for us so that we can no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died for us. Amen?